So, would you like an easy way to start art journaling in 2024? I'm going to show you how I turn just an ordinary sketchbook into an art journal. This, I've already got the cover done for this one and it's a slip off cover to make life, life a lot easier for me. If you want to see the video on how I made this, I'll link it up here. But this cover I could take off so that when I get messy inside the journal, it protects the cover. And I love the tactile quality of it. So this is a standard in the UK A5 sketchbook. I like to buy fairly good quality paper. I can't remember the weight of it, but it's a good thickness. You can feel, you can see that when I do that. What I need to do at the beginning is to reduce some of the pages. So what I do is I look for the center of a signature and I pull out a few pages. I go through, here we go, let's get to the center there. So you can tell the center of a signature, it's got the stitches there. So what I do is very gently, I grab hold of these, I very gently pull them out. I try, you don't need to be too firm with it because you don't want to tear the stitching itself. And so I'll just take a few pages out throughout the book. So this is one way I start find the centre of the next signature. It's here somewhere. Is this it? Can I see the stitches? Yes, here we are. Let's take a page out of this one. And the idea is, once you start adding collage and things, the reason why I do that is because once you start adding things like collage and other, you know, I add, I add a lot of layers and it builds up. And what you end up with is a journal that's too thick that won't close properly. So, and also this means that you could finish it at a decent, decent pace. Where's the center? Here's the center, I've just done that one. Have I just done that one? Yeah. Let's go here. So I'll just work my, my way through the sketchbook, reducing some of the pages. This paper never goes to waste. That goes in my drawers. And I will use those for other projects because they're good quality. Let me know if you're new to art journaling. I'd love to hear if someone is new to art journaling. I'm doing this series to help people start because I know a lot of people want to start but don't quite know where to start, where to begin. And they think, oh no, I have to make a journal. Well, you don't have to make a journal. This is the easiest method ever. that. So you haven't upset the integrity of the journal because the stitching is still in place. Let's see what that looks like. See now we have wider there but thinner there but later on that will expand as time goes on. I'm just having a look see if there's any more I can take out. I think that will do the trick for now. Here we are with a lovely pile of paper I can use in other projects at a side. So next stage, you don't have to do the next stage, but I like to do a few other things to the journal to get it ready. Now, if you haven't got a cover, just glue pictures on if you want, or paint it or anything, or you can leave it as it is and just write on it journal, anything you like. A nice thing to start is to date when you started it, if you want, you don't have to do that, but it is quite nice as a reminder. I don't have to do that because I, I record an awful lot of what I do. So I have on video when I start things. So I'm going to do a few more things to this pet, this journal before it's what I consider ready, but you can, you can just start journaling now. This is ready, but I'm going to show you some of the things I like to do to prepare this for art journaling. So the next thing I like to do is tear out some pages and add in some other elements. So what I'll do is I'll go through the book and I'll show you what I do. So I don't do it, I only do it in a few places. So I'll get a ruler and I will tear along like that. And then I will attach 
this is a jelly print, a bit of that. Now I'm just going to use some glue. This is just tacky glue, but even print stick will do if you do what I do the next stage, which is I take it to the sewing machine, I sew it, but you don't have to do the sewing bit. It's just that I like that effect. Glue that in. So I've cut the pages to the correct length. In fact, I've joined some jelly prints together. And that instantly gives me something to respond to, which I really like. And I could put another piece on the back of there so that both sides, but that's okay, I'll work on that. I also have some watercolour paper, which I like to add in. So if I want to just do a little watercolour there, I can. This is, I'll show you the pad. I buy this from the Society for All Artists. This is my favourite to use for mixed media. It's just perfect. It's got a good weight to it. And although it's not 100% cotton, that's fine. It's acid free. It's really good. I love it. And it's inexpensive. When I say inexpensive, all watercolour paper has a price point, but this one's quite good. So I'm going to pop a sheet of that in. Have I left enough space? Yes, I have. Let's tear along here. The, and again, this paper I can reuse for all sorts of other jobs. This is so firm, I think it will be best if I sewed it, but you don't really don't have to. And if you want, I mean, I'm, I'm just doing half pages, three quarter pages. You can do the entire page if you just a little, leave a little margin there. So I'll pop that in. And I'll just go through the book doing things like that. Here, I've got some ledger paper. I'm going to pop that in. I'll show you what I do with that. It's just fun to have some pages that are a bit more interesting to look at to start with. But really, you don't have to do it. Right, I'm going to go further in on this one. Now, ledger paper is great because it's not waterproof. So if you apply any water to it, the, the, these inks run and the handwriting sometimes runs as well. I love that. But not everyone does, but I do. <laughs> so I'm going to glue that in and leave a lot hanging over. And then I'm going to fold that over. So we've got to flip out, which is quite nice to work with as well. Or I could turn it into a pocket. Let, let me show you. So I'm going to pop that there love it i love having different papers i mean usually when i work in an art journal i'll be collaging these papers in as well so i'm going to fold that over like that so now we have a flip or a pocket i'll decide when i actually come to work in it so i think i'll put another jelly print in let's put it on this side I do have a habit of mostly doing it on that side, but let's have a bit of variety. I'm going to turn that round to make life a bit easier for myself. I like to vary how much I have as well. This one's going to be quite a lot of jelly print. I might have overdone that. Oh, that's another thing. I quite like having different widths of pages. So that's okay. I'm glad I did that. It was an error, but it works fine for me. Sewing that might be difficult. Fitting the book under the sewing machine is always a bit of a challenge. If you do that, you don't have to. I quite like it because you get some nice textures. Did that upside down, didn't I? That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Right, let's do another watercolor. So basically, oh, and the other thing I like to do sometimes as well, let me show you, is have a flip up. So let's do it with this one. So I'm not going to tear this page, but I'm going to glue that in at the top there. So I'm going to apply some glue. And this is just makes for very, you know, interesting pages to respond to. I quite often do this when I do a round robin. And I notice that people don't tend to use them in the round robin, but I do, so that's okay. So not everybody likes this sort of thing. So that could flip up like that. I can also make a pocket. So what I'll do is I'll punch a hole, a thumb hole. Oh, you bugger. You bastard. I 
bit neater than that. With this punch, I think it's even with the. Uh, so I'll fold that over like that. And now I've got a pocket there. I can sew top and bottom. Right. So that now begins to make a bit more interest in the journal. And so I'll just add a few more bits and pieces. I think I might add something to the back of that. Glue these two together, I think. And then I can respond accordingly when I get to that page. I don't necessarily work sequentially through a journal. Sometimes I'll work on one page at the back and sometimes I work at the front. Um, there's no <laughs> routine, but some people just prefer to go in order. I mean, I have done that in the past as well. But there we go. So I can carry on and do that. I'm going to now take this to the sewing machine and sew some of the pages, not all of them, just some of them, and I'll show you that. So I'm going to show you what it's like sewn. I leave the threads because I like the texture of them, but you can trim them off. And as I say, you don't have to sew. So I've just stitched along there. Stitched there, just on straight stitch. And then now I introduce some zigzag stitch for this page. Did zigzag along there as well. And this one, I have joined two pages together with sewing. You can use glue and that makes a pocket. So if I've got any interesting ephemera I want to pop in there to keep, I can pop something in on that page. Here, I've stitched along the top of the flip up and now I'm going to fold it like that. Just to remind me that that's a flip up. And here I've sewn the top and the bottom of this pocket. And so that's ready to use now. So I'm going to pop it inside its cover. And start using it. Ah, oh, love it. This is going to be a great journal to work in. So, get cracking. Get yourself a journal. Get yourself a sketchbook. This is the Artway sketchbook that I've used from Amazon. Love it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for watching. And do please press the like button. It helps the algorithm. And hopefully it'll get out to lots of other people who are starting journals this year. Do let me know if you're going to start a new journal for 2024. Down in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. And tell me what you're using. Because you might do something completely different to this. If you do use this method, I'd love to hear. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.